Welcome to Speak as One. I'm Julie Coriath. Today we have with us Dante Mathis. Hi, Dante. Hey, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Should I call you coach? You can if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> or just Dante. <laughs> no. Well, we are here at Texas State. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I asked if I should call him coach is because this is where you coach the college basketball. Yep. Yeah. And we met through our sons were both playing on the same team for a small amount of time and then you had asked me about mental health and yep. and uh what i was doing and we're interested in trying to help your players and bring it conversation here to texas state and the athletes oh yeah oh yeah i think uh, my head coach uh, coach terrence johnson had a um he had an idea um in terms of how we're de developing or working with our athletes and so we do so much in terms of working with their jump shot or, or building their bodies up or trying to make sure that they recover. And it's all to make them better student athletes. And so with him, you know, there was one part I think that we were overlooking for a little bit and it was their mental wellness. And so um, even though we're old school guys, it was something that we couldn't overlook mm -hmm. or it wasn't something that we can kind of work around. And so um, to get to know these guys better and to genuinely be able to kind of have their best interests in heart, uh, we have to consider their mental wellness. Yeah. Well, you know, so I love hearing that. You know, I feel like people are talking about it more than ever. And then I don't know about you, and I'd love to know about how you were raised, but it, when we were growing up and even in college, it's not something that was talked about at all. Yeah. Um, so I love to hear that we are hearing the younger generation now. Mm -hmm. It's being talked about. Coaches are talking about yeah. you're wanting to implement it. So I really commend you for that. But uh, yeah, I would love to know, can you tell us a little bit about your story, like where you were raised? And I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, man, my, my, my parents both raised me in a culture of sports and family. And that's pretty much it. Um, through that entire journey, um, you know, both, they, they teach you about life. Mm -hmm. And so um, my, my father used to always say that, you know, you could tell a a lot about a guy, how he lives by watching him play hmm. and vice versa. And so, man, we grew up with this passion for sports. Um, it kept us out of trouble. It kept us, you know, distracted, I guess, in the right way. And um, that just developed into a passion. And so, uh, man, I had the, the blessed opportunity, I guess, to be able to be coached by, uh, I guess, at different points in my life, just men that just had a, 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 an amazing influence on me. Mm -hmm. And so large in part, that's that's why I want to coach today mm -hmm. is because I know the effect that that has on kind of the younger generation. Yeah. So here I am. So so when did you feel like the basketball was your sport? When, when did you narrow in on basketball? I think when I was in the ninth grade, um, I made the full commitment to playing basketball. I was playing multiple sports, but... Uh, I just uh, I made up my mind that, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wanted to do it as a means of getting my college education paid for. Uh, at the time, it's what consumed me the most. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of dedicated everything I had towards it. But, uh, you know, like I said, the games taught me a lot about life. Yeah, uh, it, it it does. It, uh, just watching my son play, I feel like it's teaching me about life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Daily. <laughs> Daily. Yeah. yeah, seeing them lose and, and it's children and as you know like their bodies mm -hmm. are growing and then there you go through times where it just seems like things are a little off and yeah. they're oh, still yeah. working through it you oh, know yeah. still working through still it. working through it yeah so um did you notice when you were in high school and that like, you decided to focus on basketball did you ever feel like you had a meant like were struggled with your own mental health or were you just so focused on sports that you didn't even understand you know what mental wellness and there was a uh, there was a gray area i guess uh when i was growing up and so we didn't even you know i didn't even start hearing the term mm -hmm. mental health probably until about maybe about a good 10 15 years ago maybe mm -hmm. you hear it brought up in different circumstances back in the day it was we were taught to probably be a little bit more resilient, mm -hmm. be tough. You know, we heard that, don't be soft, things like that. Um, and comparing, I guess, that era to now, you know, uh, it's hard to compare just different eras. Right. Because there's factors that maybe allowed us to do that back then and, and have some success with it. Mm -hmm. But to be able to ask these kids nowadays to do the same thing, sometimes it just doesn't apply. And so I think that the current generation, I think they have more distractions. Um, 
I think there's more things that they're judged, you know, differently. I remember back in the day, if I had a bad game, it might be two to three days before it hits the paper. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays you have a bad game, somebody's tweet that ASAP. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you have this, even if you try not to look at it, you're just kind of faced with it. But that's just a sign of the time. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting because like when you were playing, you know, you have a few days and so you've almost had a, this opportunity to forget about that game and you've moved on and it might yeah. be in the papers, but you're still, you're already on to the next game. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you, you're held accountable through your coaches, your folks, your family, but um, nowadays the kids really care about how they look mm -hmm. and they care about how they're perceived. And so a lot of times we're asking them to run and do this and do that for X amount of hours and give me everything you have. But, um, you know, we got to examine what's on their mental scale and kind of what's weighing them down a little bit just to see if we can kind of help and get them to work through that. Because when they're mentally well, they play better. Right. Absolutely. You know, so that for us has turned into a, a motivational thing to, hey, we've got to look at that as we can't ignore it because that's what we're here for as mm -hmm. coaches. Right, exactly. And I mean, one of the things that we try to do here at Speak is One is we try to let people know that everyone has a mental health just like everybody has a physical health. Exactly. So we have to work on our physical health and we have to work on our mental health. And that's exactly. okay. Exactly. Um, so I'd love to go back into you were playing high school mm -hmm. and then you ended up going on to play college. Where did you? I actually played on that floor right behind me. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, and so I, I had an amazing opportunity to play close to where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, family could come and watch me play. Um, and like I said, I think the collection of people that I was around in my four years here was exceptional. It, it, it allowed me a chance to grow up. Mm -hmm. It allowed me a chance to, to mature emotionally, mentally, you know, and even physically. And, um, you know, from that, I guess, the initial passion that I had with the game is kind of what we always dreamed about doing. Mm -hmm. You dream about, you know, having a chance to play, you know, college basketball. Then you dream about having a chance to play professional basketball. Mm -hmm. And um, from the guys that I was around here, you know, those guys poured into me and gave me a chance to kind of live how I want to live. Love that. So what, do, once again, like we are here talking about, you mm -hmm. know, college athletes and mental health. We're even hearing it from the professionals now. They're talking about it more than ever. Mm -hmm. When you were in college, is that something that you started to understand or, you know, that it seems like that's a time too, like when kids are getting injuries or, not, I mean, did you have personally or with any of your fellow teammates, anybody struggling with I think we we all struggle because uh, I mean to be real with you, college sports is difficult. It's difficult. The schedule is very strenuous, um, and so you mentally have to be strong to get through it and to be able to have success with it. And so as a player, you kind of lean on each other, and that's the way that you bond. Um, you're blessed as a player if you have a staff that is connected enough to be able to talk to you about what you're going through, even if they acknowledge it, you know, it's a good thing, I think, for student athletes because it shows that, you know, they care for your well-being. Mm -hmm. And so when I was a little bit younger, you know, you can go in the coach's office and close the door and then, you know, just let it all out and then open the door and you walk out and you go back to normal life. Nowadays, I think it's a little bit more um, mainstream for us to be proactive as a staff. Um, with the climate that we're creating every day. Um, and then also being able to look at kids and being able to pick out and see when something is off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's my job, you know, to get them to play well, but it's also our job to, to make mentally strong, healthy, you know, young men as well. Yeah. Well, and a part of doing that is because you go through your own things and you go through, you know, you've already been through this experience and that's what makes you such an expert and a mentor. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. knowing that you've probably had your own times. And then because after Texas State, you went on to play professionally. Yes, I had a chance to do that. And I mean, it was just uh, like I said, it was a lifelong dream. Um, I, I was able to play in a beautiful place. I stayed the majority of my career in Italy. I met my wife there. Uh, my oldest son was born there. You know, my youngest son was born in the States during the off season. But um, the sport, like I said, it just really rounded me out. It polished me as a person. Mm -hmm. So I went over there as a young American, stuck in my ways, um, and I was forced to adapt. You know, I was forced to, to pick up another culture. And 
kind of raised my wall in terms of, you know, of being able to coexist and still do what I love there. Mm -hmm. So I think also with kind of raising that wall and, and, and being, you know, a little bit more outward with yourself, that was a large part, I think, in, in taking a step to acknowledge, you know, just where you are mentally. Yeah. We spend so much time in our heads. Uh, we spend so much time in our personal space that, you know, sometimes it just gets to be too much. Yeah, that, and that had to have been a challenging transition. Mm -hmm. I mean, exciting because you're doing the thing that you love, mm -hmm. but uprooting yourself from, because even you were, you grew up in San Antonio and even college mm -hmm. wasn't too far away Yeah, to moving to Italy. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it's different. Mm -hmm. It was different, but I, I also think that, um, and, and I like to also keep perspective on this, when you love something or you have a passion for mm -hmm. something so much, you're also pretty much willing to do whatever, whatever. for it. Mm -hmm. So it's two parts, you know, you have to kind of balance that, but at the same time, you have to be resilient, you know, and, and, and hard enough to balance just the ups and downs that comes with it. Yeah. Looking back on it now during that time, if you were going through anything and mm -hmm. the transition or whatever, were, were there things that you were doing for your mental health, but maybe didn't even understand that you were doing it, like calling uh, family or... Yeah. You know. I think I was. I think it was calling family. My father and my mother at that time. Um, you know, it's funny. When I was younger, my father used to always. He stay on me. Always, always, always on me. And when I was younger, I was like, man, this dude is always on my back. <laughs> but then when I got a little bit older, I kind of realized that man, this dude is right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he started. He started to be kind of a, a, a. I started to accept, you know, his wisdom and who he was in my life to be able to kind of tell him what I was going through because, you know, I was going through some things sometimes and it was just like I had done before walls. So um, I'd go to him, uh, you know, the friendships, the friends that you have back home, the genuine friends, lifelong friends. I think they all played a part in, uh, you know, helping me. And then, you know, once you receive it, you kind of learn how to give it mm -hmm. also, you yeah, know, okay. so you can kind of create that, that space for you and your loved ones. Oh, I love that. No, it's really it's it's important you know and that's what i think also makes you so unique and like how you or i see you even coach your or not even coach your son i'm sorry but like interact with your son and mm -hmm. um because you know i see a lot of times some of these I mean, some parents and the way they are with their kids mm -hmm. and them playing the sport that they played and and you seem to just have a real like relaxed mm -hmm. um demeanor around it yeah um well and, yeah i mean i i don't, I don't want to run them off so yeah. <laughs> you know i have to kind of but i think it's 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 like a sliding scale mm -hmm. you know sometimes you have to know when to give them a lot and then sometimes you have to know when to just sit down and shut up mm -hmm. and so sometimes you know when i can kind of sit down and shut up it just shows it, it shows them that you know i'm not gnawing at the bit on having to say my little two cents every now and then, you know? And so sometimes I, I actually get a little bit more with my kids just by sometimes just support and being mm -hmm. quiet. So that's what I try to do. Yeah. Well, it allows them to then have space to talk and feel like, you know, they have a, not necessarily a say in things, mm -hmm. but it definitely feels like they have room to open up to you mm -hmm. and things that matter to them. Well, yeah. And you'll just listen. 100 percent 100 percent, and not fix everything or try you know to. try it yeah exactly try, yeah, exactly, try, to. try yeah. to yeah try it yeah. uh, well so then you moved back here and now you're coach here at texas state what are things that you see i mean we've already talked a little bit about some of the differences but mental health is being talked about more than ever mm -hmm. um and unfortunately there have been college athletes that have been taking their lives because of the the pressure mm -hmm. it's not only you know, I feel like when I was growing up, there wasn't a heavy emphasis on on education. Mm -hmm. Like if you were an athlete, then you could get by with just being an athlete. You mm -hmm. can't do that anymore. Yes. You have education, mm -hmm. you have um, the sport, you have NIL. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of other pressures or a lot of oh, yeah. pressures. Yeah. And so do you feel like that's why, and social media, do you mm -hmm. feel like that's why we're hearing about m more athletes struggling with their mental health? Or do you think maybe it was actually, it was happening before we just didn't hear about it? Um, I think it was happening before, but it's probably misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, depression, it's it's a funny thing, um, how it works and the effects of it. Um, and then I think sometimes also, you know, 
a lot of people aren't even willing to talk about their personal business. A lot of people they used to categorize it. I'm just a private person. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a way to kind of keep that door closed to where, you know, maybe some things that they should have been addressing, they should have came out. Um, like I said, I think that they have so much going on now. Um, the one thing as a coach, I think that we have to understand sometimes is that they have other stuff going on in their lives rather than basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at my computer, I look at the stats, I look at the video, I look at this all day. I'm, I'm constantly thinking of ways of how we can get better, we can do this, we can do that. They have other things going on in their life. They may do terrible on a test. They may have lost a loved one. They may have broke up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's a couple of guys on our team, I think, that, you know, they have children that they have to be there for, like mentally, you know what I mean, daily. So their moods it changes based on all these factors and things that they have to balance because in with having a winning program and, and what we strive to be was kind of a standard mm. and that standard sometimes it, it, it expects excellence and strength and conditioning in the classroom, mm. socially on the court, you know what I mean? And, and with a lot of that and everything else that they have going on, you're talking about kids that are between the ages of 18 and 23. So, you know, some of the things that I know now, I didn't know them or understand them until someone taught them to me. Right. You know, so basically they were ignored. So what we're trying to do is, is just make sure that some of the things that these kids could possibly, you know, uh, have in their lives, we want to make sure that those things aren't ignored. Right. Yeah. Because it seems like when we do try to ignore things or we don't acknowledge our emotions or feelings, mm -hmm. they just can grow and cause uh, situations to get worse, really. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. So like we try to we try to keep them, you know, evenly yoked uh, mentally, spiritually, you know, emotionally. Uh, and then also, I think physically, you know, when all those kind of align in, in like a good space, mm -hmm. you know, that's when they're going to be at their best. What do you see as some of the mental wellness routines or that y'all try to implement um, or things that you would like to start implementing? Um, I think mentally, one, one of the things that we do is, is just the, the environment that we create, I guess, for, for some of our kids. I think also it's, it's letting them know that we accept and understand their margin of error. Um, you know, basketball is not a perfect sport, mm -hmm. so you're not going to make all your shots. You know, you're not going to do everything perfectly. And mm -hmm. so sometimes being able to kind of connect with them as well is, is, man, I make mistakes every day, mm -hmm. you know, being human. And so sometimes it's how I act when they make a mistake or they, you know, they, they come up short in certain areas. And uh, um, the goal is to limit making the same mistakes. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think in doing that, you, you automatically get better. And so every game, it's, it's funny, we always talk about it, we joke about it, that every single game, the same thing happens. Mm -hmm. Every game, it's, it's the same thing, it's just in a different frequency. So getting these guys to kind of understand and limit their mistakes, you know, that's, it's automatic improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but how you handle their mistakes, the pressure that they get, from even themselves sometimes. Sometimes our guys, they're they're their own worst right. like just critic. And so talking them off that ledge and then getting them to understand that um, you know, that we're okay with where they are. I think we work in a way to where we try to improve everything. We continue to work. We continue to work. We continue to understand. Sometimes it requires like ultimate flexibility sometimes coach you know he'll make a perfect practice plan that he thought out for two hours sometimes we have to scrap it mm -hmm. just because of the mood or, or different things that are going on with some of our guys but the when they're like i said when they're mentally well and balanced that's when we normally get the best out of them so that's what we try to create yeah that environment. have you had any of your players that you see are dealing with more extreme anxiety or depression or things that are going on? Um, it's different because, you know, you have 14 guys mm -hmm. and not everyone has the same role, mm -hmm. right? right? So you have this platform to do what each of those 14 guys loves. They've been striving to do it since they were a little kid. Mm -hmm. Only issue is it's not everybody gets to do it. Mm -hmm. So what you'll have is, is you'll have five to eight guys maybe that are playing a lot. You have some guys that aren't playing a lot. 
you may have some guys that are playing and making mistakes. You may have some guys that thought their role would be different. And so how they handle that, you know, that it, it's when they come in each day, you know, Monday, they could be this. Tuesday, they could be that. Wednesday, they can be mm -hmm. this. And so it's our job, I guess, to get them to see the big picture mm -hmm. because a lot of times, too, development, and I think uh, results, you know, it's, 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 it's over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And if we can kind of get them to understand that, hey, you know what, where you're going to be in a month. Some guys, a year, it's not going to be necessarily where you are right now. Mm -hmm. But each one of them is unique because they all have different personalities. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of manage the personality, who they are, and then what they have around them um, to just get them in the right space. Mm -hmm. How, you know, I feel like as um, society can look up to athletes mm -hmm. and coaches and we think that you're just like invincible, you know, that mm – -hmm. You're not going to have any mental health issues or you're not going to mm -hmm. just struggle in any sort of way. Yeah. And that's just not the case as I'm learning, right? Yeah. Um, that yeah. everybody has emotions, mm -hmm. uh, no matter if you're an athlete or no matter the kind of money you have or mm -hmm. whoever you are, we all have emotions. And those emotions can play out in, in certain ways and sometimes they can kind of take over. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like we can help society understand that that y'all are not invincible well i think it's i think it's two parts and so when, when you sign up for what you sign up for as an mm -hmm. athlete you have to understand you know what comes with it mm -hmm. and so you know if i sign up to be a fireman i may have to run in a burning building yeah you know and so sometimes i think that what comes with your preparation we all prepare to do well you know, we prepare to play well, everyone prepares to win, you know, uh, all these good things. But at the same time, you kind of have to understand, um, you know, how you're being judged. I think, too, you know, some of the best interactions that we've had with, with fans are just when they respect your work. Mm -hmm. You know, when they know you're working, when they know you're dedicated, um, you know, when they know that you're as invested as maybe they are. And so sometimes, you know, you have fans that are, man, they, they, that's all they do is just eat, drink, sleep, you know, school's colors. And so, you know, they want to see, they want to see that you're putting in the work. They want to see the results. Sometimes you have superficial fans. They're just there for the entertainment aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes, hey, those are the people that will let you know, like, hey, man, you airball, you airball that ball, you know what I mean, the second mm -hmm. shot. But, um, man, I think it's just, it's, it's, it's your, it's your work, mm -hmm. you know, when you're really putting in work, you know, it's kind of like taking a test. You know, I never stressed or, or worried about a test I was taking in class when I was really, really, really prepared. Right. Now, if I slacked or if I didn't study or if I crammed, anxiety normally, it normally rises. And so uh, it's, basketball is similar. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's just you have to continue to work um, to put yourself in a position to where you can contribute, you know, to your team's success. Mm -hmm. And uh, we give all of our guys an equal opportunity to do that. They just have to manage it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, the reason I was asking that is because I do hear certain athletes speaking mm -hmm. out, you know, about that more, more professional athletes speaking out about it mm -hmm. in a way that, you know, they're like, we're human yeah. too. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times they will get people on social media saying really mm. awful things yeah. about even their body or maybe it's not even the way they played. Yeah. And that's just got to be so hurtful. Yeah. And having the mental strength to put all that aside, yeah. you know, and yeah. that can be hard for people, I think, especially when they're young and impressionable, mm -hmm. you know, they're still at this age, their brains aren't even fully developed, you know? Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's, it's certain things are kind of trending, uh, trending away. So, you know, the guy that comes to the game to throw his popcorn on somebody or to mm -hmm. throw his drink on somebody. You know, those are those are becoming far and few between. Good. But um, I just think that, like I said, I think that, um, you know, it works differently, though, because even with the psyche of an athlete, if you're playing on the road, you know, yeah, you're going to get the booze. But also, if you're playing well, just the, the despair you hear in the crowd mm -hmm. of you making their night like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not like it's supposed to be. 
it works both ways. We both take from it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the fan kind of giggles and chuckles a little bit about things they say to athletes, mm-hmm. you know, but I also think athletes kind of, you know, I, I kind of chuckle to myself if I went on the road, played at your place, and we've won, and I know the sadness that we've created that night, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's all we can take from it. But, I mean, if I hear a guy talking about me, you know, I, I don't lose any sleep. Yeah. You know, no. I mean, that's just how it is. I right. mean, you just, there's, you know, they let anybody in games. So, I mean, that's just what comes with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you had something, like, think about your own regimen mm-hmm. and – way that you live your life, a series of things that you can suggest to people just to support their mental strength and health and mm-hmm. moving forward, the things that you do? Um, I think if you're talking about uh, in, in first person, I, I just think that you have to have a little bit of balance in your life. Um, you know, that's something that has to be learned because, uh, you know, everyone comes from different backgrounds. They come from different upbringings. So you can't expect a kid, you know, and then all of a sudden, boom, at 14, 15, 16, to know these things if they never experienced it. But um, I think at a certain point, you know, we all crave wisdom. We all crave something that's going to polish us a little bit. A lot of times, sometimes we may not even know it. You know, we may just take it for granted. But I just, you know, I think it starts with creating a balance for yourself, but there's a mental kind of maturity that has to come with you even being able to realize that. After that, I just think it comes with surrounding yourself with like-minded people, mm-hmm. people that can inspire you. Mm-hmm. And then I think you have to kind of pay it back as well. You know, and if you do that, it's a pretty good cycle that you can manage. Yeah, right. Do you feel like working out every day and um, uh, helps your mental health? Are you an advocate of? I think it, I think it does from a point of, uh, of being a stress relief. Mm-hmm. I think so. And so some people, you know, they all have. They may want to hike. They may want to ride bikes. I think it's great to have kind of a healthy uh, kind of activity that that kind of just gets you out of whatever mental state that you're in. Mm-hmm. I can go to the gym. I can put my headphones on. I can listen to music. I can work out. I can sweat. And for that amount of time, I can kind of just disconnect. Right. You know, and then, hey, plug back in and then reconnect to do whatever I have to do. I think it's healthy. Mm-hmm. But like I said, that's part of a it's part of a routine that you have to create for yourself. Sure. Do you um, do you feel like any of your basketball players or, or anybody like spiritual or do y'all bring that into? Uh, we do. We uh-huh. do. But even though they're from different backgrounds, I think it's important for our, our guys to uh, have that spiritual balance. Mm-hmm. So the world sometimes it's just it doesn't work in your favor. You know, when it doesn't work in your favor, you know, even analyzing it, it just helps. Mm -hmm. You know, some of our guys take the lead on that. There's 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 several of our guys on our team that are very, very, very outspoken in terms of their spirituality. We ride that wave Mm -hmm. because it creates a great atmosphere for our locker room. Mm -hmm. You know, it also creates an atmosphere for us interacting with them. Um, And so I think it's healthy. You know, we don't try to push anything on anyone. But, um, you know, in the future, as, as Coach Johnson always says, these guys are going to be, they're going to be husbands, they're going to be fathers. Mm-hmm. So although, you know, we want them to do well on the court, we're trying to make sure that these guys will be as balanced as possible. Mm-hmm. Dante, thank you so much for joining us and for helping us change the conversation around mental health. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us here at Speak as One, and I want to thank Dante Mathis for joining us. And if you want to hear Dante's story and others, please go to our YouTube channel at Speak as One and hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And we'll see you next time.